today's tutorial we're going to be talking about proximity prompts inside of Roblox Studio. Now proximity prompts are actually a lot more simple than they're made out to be and we're going to be going ahead and showing you how to use them that way you can implement them into your own games and that will be perfect. So first off let's go ahead click on our little spawn location right here and it could be any other 3D instance inside of your world such as a part, a union, a model, anything like that that you can add a proximity prompt into. Not actually a model I meant to say anything that has substance to it like this spawn location right here it's a part could be a mesh part a union you get what i mean so let's go ahead and click on the plus icon of the right of our spawn location after hovering over it inside of the explorer and we're going to search for a proximity prompt the icon is a little e button with a little mouse cursor pointing to it so that's how you know it's a proximity prompt other than the name so let's click on the proximity prompt right here and this isn't actually something that you're going to see inside of your workspace when you're not actually playing the game if we were to click on play then you'll see that inside of our spawn location right here it will say our e key right here and then we have the ability to interact with it and that's really all a proximity prompt is it is a prompt that shows up when a player is in a certain proximity to it and allows the player to interact with a certain 3d object you also notice that when we go out of the proximity of the prompt right here, it will disappear, which is exactly how it's intended to be used. Now inside the proximity prompt, you'll notice all sorts of different properties, such as the action text, which was the text that we saw when we were playing the game, which is interact right here. You can change this to whatever you would like. It could be something like build. If you're trying to build a sandcastle, it could be something like destroy. If you're trying to destroy that sandcastle, but you get the point. We'll just leave it as interact for now. You can decide whether or not you want it to be clickable or not, whether you want it to be enabled. That's a pretty common property in a lot of things though. You can change what key it's gonna be on the gamepad, which is the Xbox controller, I believe, or, or any gamepad controller in that realm of gameplay. You can change the hold duration. This is the duration for how long you need to hold the key in order for the proximity prompt to take effect. You can set this to be like 10 seconds if you wanted to, 100 seconds even 59 seconds it doesn't really matter or you can leave it at zero for it to be instant i'm personally going to set this to about two seconds you can even change the keyboard key code to any of these key codes but you get the point there are all sorts of different properties inside of here now you'll notice that if we click the game now you'll notice inside of the game if we go ahead and interact with our part right here it's not actually going to do anything but that's because we need to go ahead and script it so I'm going to press stop right here and inside of our proximity prompt, let's click on the plus icon and insert a script. Now a proximity prompt has several different events that can be used in order to script a proximity prompt. The first one is scripts.parent.triggered. Now triggered is going to be called whenever the proximity prompt is actually finished being interacted with, you could say. As you saw before with that little circle that was spinning around, that's how long it would take to trigger the event pretty much. So when the proximity prompt is done with the hold duration of two seconds, then we can go ahead and connect a function here. And we can even take the player who triggered the proximity prompt as a parameter. From there, if you'd like to make this client sided, you can fire a remote event over with the player and do anything you want to on the client side. But I'm simply gonna change the color of the spawn location whenever the proximity prompt gets triggered. So this is gonna be equal to brick color dot new. I'm gonna do lime green. All right, I'll wait three seconds and say script dot parent dot parent dot brick color will be equal to brick color dot new medium stone gray as it is. And then let's go ahead and click on play one more time just to give you guys an example of what this is going to do. So once again, if we go ahead and interact with our proximity prompt right here, then you'll see it'll change the color of our spawn location. And then after a few seconds, it'll go back to its original color. This is a simple thing that you can do with proximity prompts. There are also a few different events. Another common one that you'll use is script.parent.prompt shown, which will trigger when the prompt becomes visible and the same when the prompt is hidden. So yeah, these are two common ones that you'll use a lot. So yeah, anyways, that's going to be pretty much everything that you need to know about proximity prompts inside of Roblox Studio for now. If you learned a lot from this tutorial, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.